A look at our social net for the day, and we start, where else do you want to start when you're talking tennis with the GOAT, Roger, at least in my book, Roger Federer. You know, they don't name things for people lightly in Switzerland. It's not a thing they do, but when it's Roger Federer in his hometown of Basel, they name things, and this is apparently the train that Federer took to practice as a youngster every day. It was the number eight line. They've named it the Federer Express, and that's quite an honor for Roger. Well, that might well be the train that takes you to Hogwarts because it's been a fairy tale of a life met Raj in his mid teens and he deserves every accolade that he gets. He seems to do everything right and on and off the court, that is the least he deserves. Glad to see him enjoying everything he does and, and you know, just wish the best for him. He's such a kind and giving guy that it's great to see him receiving the love that, that he how ironic is it that it was the 8 train growing up and that's his favorite number his birthday is August 8th that's the name of his company incredible meant to be beautiful looking train there by the way as well all right next up this is our producer one of our producers here at tennis channel Mike Haston talking about pet peeves and Hasty here says one of his biggest pet peeves is when opponents, and we don't like this, when they wear the exact same outfit on the court. When we're trying to call matches or highlights, it's very confusing for us. We don't know which is which unless maybe one's wearing a hat. So stop doing that, folks out there. <laughs> Let's talk pet peeves. Tracy, I'll start with you. You got any pet peeves that just drive you nuts? Actually, I have a new one. I don't like when people, you know, put pump their fists up kind of right in their face of their opponent. That's an old one that's been around for a while. But this new one with the electronic line calling, and mm. then you see players that question it. it like once maybe because they they'd kind of lost it. But we see some of the players 15, 16 times. It's like... It's a machine, people. It's right. It's always right. We haven't seen one overturned yet. Absolutely. Nico, what about you? I'm going to go to the corner of the court, right outside the lines, and uh, to the annoying, overbearing parents. I just hate that. <laughs> when I try to work with some kids, and then you see the parent come and tell you, well, I don't get mixed up in my kid's career. Those are the worst type, you coaches. Be aware of those. And it's just hard to watch. You know, having been around tennis for so long, and then you see the kids being pressured by their parents, it's, it's just hard to see. You know, it's funny. My pet peeve, it's, it's sort of become obsolete because of COVID, but when the ball kids used to have to bring the towels yes. to the players, and the, the players would wipe all that sweat off, and then not only that, but half the time the player would just throw it, like on the throw ground. It. Just like, here, just pick that up, my sweaty towel, and bring it back to the... I, I, I'm glad we're not seeing that anymore. Now the players, they have to put their towels in these buckets now in the corners so no one else has to touch them I think because it'll of stay. COVID. Don't you think it'll stay? And I think that's one of the best innovations of COVID because now the players have their own box, keep it private, keep it separate. Good call. I, I think, think it should stay. Then, yeah. they, then they throw it to the crowd. <laughs> oh. <laughs> because everybody in the crowd wants that. Exactly. The used sneakers, the sweaty towel. All right. Well, hopefully we won't see that again.